Okay. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Today we are is day one of the GK Icon educational series that we're going to be putting on. We're going to be utilizing Zoom as we're all in here today. And we are recording. We are going to hopefully pass this around, this recording. But today is an introduction as to what this educational series is, where it came from, and then who are the two masterminds behind it. And uh, it's going to be more of us talking where when we move forward into our next few meetings or all of our meetings, this is going to be more facilitative and more of you talking and seeing what you, know, what you have for ideas, concepts, and we're going to kind of test each other uh, going back and forth. All right. So y'all know me. I don't think I, there isn't a person on here that I don't know. Um, so my name is Eric Eisenhut. I work here in obviously Pittsburgh with the, almost all of you. And for those that are in Florida, I know you're in good hands with Coach Ryan Matson, who is obviously one of our glove partners and a good friend of mine. So good to have Ryan and, and some Florida um, premier goalkeepers on here. Um, more importantly, the real mastermind behind this whole thing is Tony Elliott. I see the giggle already coming off his face. But Tony, for those that don't know, let me share this screen with you real quickly. Sorry. Tony is a legend in England. And when I say that, I mean, we've heard the word, the names of um, Mark Litton. We've heard of the names Danny Gaspar, Tony DeChico. Tony is that in England. And I'm going to, I brought up essentially his resume. And what I'm going to do is go through this quickly. I don't expect you to read it. And please don't look for me to stop at every bullet point because trust me, we'll be here all night. <laughs> so more credit to Tony. But what I do want you to pay attention to is not only Tony's qualifications and, and his credits. I mean, you see an A license co UEFA coach to start. You go down to his status on, on his educator status and what he can do and with his background. But more importantly to me is I love talking to people who have played at the highest levels. And, and Tony from 86 to 99, you can see the clubs he played for and the leagues he played for. And then where it really starts to get interesting for us coaches is what he's done since he's retired. He's wrote a book. He's an ambassador of GK Icon. And for those of you that are paying for our goalkeeper intelligence uh, membership, you're going to see a lot of Tony stuff on there. So please get in there. You know it's accredited source. And obviously, you're going to see here where he's coached. He's coached in the likes of Liverpool, Manchester City, Carlisle. And you can read down if you'd like. You also see where he's, how he's represented England on an international stage. Um, he's worked real closely with um, some of our coaches that we're having as guest panels um, from Mark Litton and, and, and their, their connection through futsal. So guys, without further ado, if you could please do me a favor and just give a thumbs up, take yourself off mute, say hello to Mr. Tony Elliott. Tony, thank you for joining us today, sir. Hi right, guys. Great to be here. As I said earlier, uh, Good evening to you over there, but good morning from, from the UK. Obviously, uh, Sam's over in the UK as well, I guess. But, um, yeah, so uh, obviously, Eric, we had a, a quick chat around your plans with uh, some of the, the sort of work I've been doing and, and uh, passing around on, on social media to help coaches and goalkeepers. And uh, I had no hesitation when you, you came up this idea. And, um, yeah, just let's run with it. And I'm looking forward to it. Really excited by it, obviously might be a good idea to sort of once we get into this to give you an idea of the rationale behind it and the context behind it as to why I've sort of started to do what I'm doing kind of rejigged a little bit the way we work over here in the UK with our goalkeepers but I guess we'll get deeper into that as we go on absolutely absolutely thank you and welcome everybody um that real quickly just so you know how Tony and I have I kind of came together with this um if, if you don't please do follow Tony on social media. The content he, Tony's putting out there and he labels it in caps, free content. <laughs> He's, we're not charging for us. We don't want to. We, we believe that, you know, this is what we do and we do it because we love it. And the content out there is, is quality of the highest quality. And when we started kind of talking, we noticed that with the goalkeeper panel, the coaches panel discussions, we were covering the same content. And there, the synchronicities between the two and how we could easily merge these together to, to have a weekly conversation with goalkeepers and, and to ask to answer your questions, to have a conversation about communication, about the details of the games from a goalkeeper's perspective. 
it's a great way to bring in the quote unquote classroom avenue of learning. Um, we've always been applying it for sugar for years now, and we've been talking about it, but now to really, you know, look at film, look at video, watch some of these coaches panel discussion and hear different opinions, look at the content Tony's putting together. And then, you know, it gives us another avenue for a way for this information to really resonate um, in your brain. And, and I believe in that. I came from that corporate training background and training people and talking to people. And I think this is going to be a, a really a great experience. So I, I first and foremost, thank Tony for his collaboration efforts. And what I'd like to do, Tony, if it's okay with you, I'm going to share the screen to your six slides. I'm going to go, you know, just go in that order that you've presented them to me. Mm -hmm. And if you could just give a minute on each, you know, just to go through not, we don't want to get deep, deep, but just to kind of introduce yeah. these people because they don't have this yet. I'm going to send this in an yeah. email form um, probably tomorrow to everybody. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this will be the first time well, they well, see I'll it. tell you what, if, if possible, Eric, I don't yes, know sir. if we can possibly do this, but I think just to give a little bit of rationale, and context to this can you possibly allow me to share my screen with the group great call is that great possible call. yeah let i know me, uh, i might be uh putting you on the spot here you you definitely are <laughs> <laughs> that's me let me out that's all good it's all good i just actually had to get off of that yeah one second sir i'm gonna stop sharing that everybody um where's tony at if you can't, don't panic. We can crack on with it. But sugar, I try him. Does anyone knows how to do that? Please let me know. You I'm just gonna... have to switch me to be. I think you just have to switch me to become the host. Okay. And if I go to you, there you are, Tony. Yeah. And how do I click on that button to get you to give that responsibility to you? I'm not sure, but don't worry if you can't. We'll just move on if you All right. I'm going to put that one screen up, let you talk to it, and I'm going to continue to fiddle with it, and hopefully we can uh, okay, get that done that's if cool. that's all right. Okay, one okay yeah. go right ahead, Tony. Sorry. Yeah, so basically, guys, the the way we we work, we then develop our goalkeepers in the UK. We 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 work with what, what we would class as a, a holistic approach to development. We tend to work to what we call the four corners. So those four corners would be, um, and what we tend to do is blend the technical and tactical side of the, of, the, of the goalkeeper's development together. So that's one corner. Then we would have a physical corner. So obviously the goalkeeper's physical development. Then we'd have a psychological corner um, where we work on obviously the mindset of the goalkeeper. And then we'd have a social corner, which is you know, how the goalkeeper connects with the, the teammates, with the coaches and so on and so forth. So, We've worked to the same kind of model for many, many years now here in the UK. But over the, the last three or four years, I've began to really scrutinise the amount of detail that we, we share with our uh, goalkeepers and coaches of goalkeepers and what that looks like when we're delivering the message to those people. And for me, it's become a little bit mundane, a little bit boring and a little bit lacking in in detail for me there's a to use a term there's not a lot of meat on the bones so what i've this this period now where we've all been at home you know obviously football here and samuel second this football here is shut down we, we've the last practical session i did was on march the 10th so we're literally uh, stuck at home we can't um, be with the players we can't do any physical work uh, we have limited access to them but it's given me some fantastic time to really look at um, the theoretical side of, of our message that we deliver mm -hmm. to the coaches and players but I've really thought about giving it a new look and a different image and, and sprucing up but also giving real depth of detail to um, these uh, presentations and the way that we deliver the message to the goalkeepers and the coaches so really the when people take these pieces of, of uh, work and this um, information that they need to develop, it's not just key headings or one-liners. There's a lot more detail for the individuals to take away and then to begin to utilise and use in their holistic development. So obviously there's a slide, the, big, the earlier slide, I don't know if I sent that to you, Eric, where we just basically label 
Tony, um, I just so found sorry. the option to make you the host. I'm going to click that button right now. Did you? Brilliant. You are the host now. I believe you have to accept it, and you're good, sir. Yes. Okay. Superb. So, have you got me, guys? Can everybody see my screen? Yep. yep. Can everybody see? Yeah. If you want to switch your mute buttons off, guys, I don't mind a chorus of yes, I've got your coach. <laughs> I might have to yes, do that. Yes, coach. <laughs> Brilliant. So, guys, this is, this is what um, we would normally work from. Sam, I think you've probably gone through the system here. And this is what it, it generally looks like. We get four boxes. Um, and in those boxes, you'll get some key headings. Um, but if you look at those, those words that, those terms could mean so many different things. And for me now, when we deliver the courses, when we work with goalkeepers and coaches, I think we need to give them a lot more detail because this, this is, is, is absolute pivotal detail for any individual goalkeeper when they're working. So if, we do, if we're working on the development and we, we do some work with them in the classroom or we do some work with them on the field, I think it's great that they can then take stuff away and you'll see in the, in the presentations that I've done, in the slides that I've given, there's a lot more detail to these headings. Um, so basically what, what it looked like when we talk about the characteristics of a goalkeeper, I'll just put them all on. This would be the kind of idea that we've started to modernise um, the depth of detail that we go into with our goalkeepers. So... But again, here, guys, you only see four elements. So again, for me, yes, we've started to put some more meat on the bones. There's a little bit more detail from each of the corners. But we're also missing, missing the, the social corner around. So again, I, I looked at this. I took the, the, the four box one that you've just seen. And I thought, how can we tidy this up? How, we, how can we make it more um, uh, pl pleasurable on the eye and, and with a lot more detail and so on and so forth? So what, what we've done instead of what I've done here, instead of, um, I'll move that across there, just putting the four corners like the terminology, it's technical, tactical, physical. Well, I've added another word to each one. So what, I, what I've, I'm trying to look at in all of these slides now, and the depth of detail we'll go in will be around the goalkeeper's technical ability. So what skill sets have they got? When we look at the role of the modern goalkeeper, and we're going to look at some of the challenges that face the, the modern goalkeeper now in, in the modern game, what technical capabilities do they need? What, what's the skill set that they need? So we'll look at the technical ability. Um, that will be in possession. So in other words, when the team's got the ball and the goalkeeper's um, you know, called upon to use their feet, but also out of possession. So you know, when we think about things like shot stopping, dealing with crosses, 1v1s, um, coming out of the area to clear your lines, that kind of stuff. So, you know, what's the, the, the technical um, skill set that the goalkeeper needs? Then we look at the tactical awareness. So tactically, the goalkeeper needs to be adept. They need to understand the game. They need to have a knowledge of their own team's um, philosophy and strategies going into games. Um, and obviously they need to understand um, their role both in possession and out of possession so what's their job for the team but also they need to recognize and understand things like set plays uh, you know um, both in possession and out of possession and again that will be determined by how much um, time they have together as a group um, how much time the coach can spend on working on things like that so you know this will be um, dependent on the yeah. levels that you may be playing at and the coach may be coaching at, but also the amount of time that you have to spend together and, and be together to work on these things. Also the physical capability, you know, the role of the goalkeeper now is, is ever evolving. And for me now, the goalkeepers are becoming more athletes than um, top half heavy um, power units, you know? So, you know, we must work on various things and we're going to go and look at those in depth. You know, maybe not this evening, but at um, a later date. Then we look at the mindset of the goalkeeper. So the psychological balance, okay, because obviously that's what the goalkeeper needs to be. They need to be balanced. Um, so they have to be able to manage their own mindset um, to deal with many, many different um, decision-making situations in games and, and obviously um, difficult situations at times. So how do they do that? 
And then the final one is the social connection. So, you know, the goalkeeper uh, must connect with, with their teammates, with the coaches, and, and obviously with their environment. So, you know, socially is the goalkeeper connected. So as you see there on the right, I just put a little, little paragraph in. So maximising the holistic development and performance of the goalkeeper in the modern game places a unique challenge at the feet of the goalkeeping coach. And that's what it does now, because we can't just focus on one element or one aspect of, of your play. There has to be an holistic approach to the way we now work with and develop our goalkeepers. OK, Eric, I don't know if you want to jump in on any of that. Honestly, you've hit it all, man. I'm, I'm not. You're good. Cool. You keep going, please. Cool. Okay, so guys, what I came up with then, I, I, I sat, I sat and went through a lot of um, video clips, and if you, I, I'd, I'd love to share my my, um, my my footage library with you. I've got tons and tons of games from from the top level and from the women's game, the men's game, um, from around the world, and I've I've watched so many games, and I've tried to look at and come up with some key headings around what are the challenges that face the goalkeeper in the modern game. Now, I'm not going to read out all of those that you can see on the screen. I'll try and move us around a little bit. Um, so if you obviously look at the left-hand side and the central part, what I've tried to do as well, guys, if you remember, if you go back to the colour coding I've used here, so red is technical, orange is tactical, uh, physical is yellow, green is psychological, blue is social. I've tried to colour code these um, challenging situations in modern game into those relevant uh, elements of development for the goalkeeper. So dealing with back passes and pressure under pressure um, under pressure or no pressure for me that that probably would be more technical than any other element. So I've put those that in there. Um, let's pick out an orange one, which would be tactical. So you've got support and starting positions, both in possession, out of possession, and in transition for the goalkeeper. So what we notice is there's a lot more repositioning for the goalkeeper due to the nature of the game. So the goalkeeper must always be in contact with the game there. There's never a moment when they can sort of switch off and take a break and, and what I call spectate. So you must always be prepared to participate in the game and not be a spectator. That, that's key. So support positions, starting positions, um, there's a lot more of that going on. On the left-hand side there, if you look at, this is probably more towards the top end because of the involvement of the goalkeepers. The goalkeeper can now cover up to 6K, up to four miles in a game. Mm -hmm. And that's evolved and changed over the years. A lot of the work the goalkeeper did, um, and I'm probably going to go back 20, 15, 20 years, would predominantly be in the six-yard box mm -hmm. and in the area. But now, with the way the, ma the game is played in, in, in the modern game and, and obviously the way that, that coaches want to play the game now, the goalkeeper plays a much more, much more of an involvement. So they're having to cover um, a lot more distance and bigger spaces. Hence, that's why now they can cover yeah. to that kind of distance in a game. OK? I think the other sort of big area I want to look at here, and this is particularly when we're talking about um, out of possession. So when the team doesn't have the ball, we kind of now split our work with the goalkeepers into three areas. So the goalkeepers are either defending the goal, yeah, they're either defending the area, so they've left the goal and then they're dealing with the ball that's been played through or into uh, the goal area, or they're defending the space. So defending the space between them and the last defender or the, the, the last line of defence. Um, so we kind of work with our goalkeepers now in their, in their development in terms of their out of position um, work, out of possession work across those three areas. Defend the goal, defend the area or defend the space. And our work with our goalkeepers always links in with the practices that our head coaches will develop for the team. So on one day, we could be working on an in-possession um, format. In other words, the team has the ball. Then I would spend more time working on the goalkeeper's distribution and so on. The following day, we could be working on the team defending or out of possession. So my work would then be based on what I've just explained to you there. Decision-making of when to defend the goal, when to defend the area, when to defend the space. Okay? So all of these um, sort of phrases, words and phrases I've used here, they're all linked to um, 
the five elements of development and these are all areas that we must strive to develop you guys on as goalkeepers and coaches obviously to understand all of these areas of development and that then will give you an holistic approach to to your goalkeeping development as i said i'm not going to read through all of those because i guess you're going to be doing that eric at a later date so um if you allow me we can move on if you want yeah Absolutely. so did you want to quickly look at the first slide because i think was this the first one that you had eric technical Yes, that was so next week. We're going to focus on say two or three of these in here, and it might be just one based on how the conversation goes. Yeah. But we are going to start with the technical ability piece. Yes, okay. Well, just, just with that, because obviously I know we've got quite a, a number of you guys on there. Does anybody have any questions or any thoughts or, um, you know, any concerns over what you've seen up to now? And that can come from any of you coaches, goalkeepers. Please feel free to comment on any of this. Um, what I've tried to do is give you some rationale and context behind it. So does anybody have any questions? Tony, the only thing I want to explain to everybody is keep in mind for the younger kids, we are going to have two groups in when we discuss it because we know we can get with the older guys who understand this and want that deep, deep dive. We're going to do that. With the goalkeepers that are a little bit younger, more at the academy level and just getting into that level of advancement, it's mm -hmm. going to be a different level. And don't take that as any disrespect it's just where you are in your development and we want to keep people like-minded people together so the conversations won't will, will merge and won't go over one's head so please keep that in mind yeah. tony thank you just want to make, make yeah, that clear cool. so i think i think with this as well eric although we're i'm sharing these slides with you if there's any supporting documents presentations that you need um then obviously um I'm more than happy to supply that for you and to, and to share that with you. Um, so you just let me know as we move through, you know, whatever you need. Okay. Um, so yeah. if we, if we just move on, so what I won't do is, is obviously go through um, everything here. Now, suddenly it won't let me work that presentation. So is it, oh, there we go. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So I've tried to sort of build this and put this together um in kind of a logical order because that's the way that you know in theory we should be coaching so if you remember back guys to the the four corners and how mundane and how boring that looked literally the ready and set position was just you know three words that was it there was no detail there was no um context or anything else behind that so what i'm trying to do with this image with these images is try to make it more pleasurable on the eye, but for each aspect of those elements of development, there's a little bit more detail in, in the globes as such, okay? So again, I'm just gonna read through them. And obviously with these, there would be then more detail to come once you get more in depth with your, in, into your development and into your pathway. So the first thing that we'd, we'd think about in terms of the technical side, that we need the goalkeeper to be in, in a ready set position. So the detail here is, is adopt a, a, adopts a correct and balanced body shape in order to deal with balls that are played into the space, the area, or delivered directly towards the goal. So basically, if you think back to the um, out of possession three, three areas that I've talked about, so defend the goal, defend the area, defend the space, the goalkeeper must always adopt a ready position to deal with any of those situations, depending on where they are supporting in terms of their distance and angle from the goal. So, for instance, let's just say that the attacking team are in the final third and they're moving towards goal. More times than not, the goalkeeper will be thinking about a ready set position in the goal maybe a short a, a small distance off the line recognizing and knowing that there may be a shot coming at any time so the goalkeeper would then probably take up what we'd class as the atypical set position which is you know um, hands more or less shoulder width apart and obviously then you've got your body weight forward um your, your feet kind of shoulder width apart and that that's that varies depending on the size and, and the you know the um the, the requirements of the goalkeeper. So some will have a wider 
um, foot stance, some will have a tighter foot stance, um, and that varies. Everybody's set position is different. Um, and obviously, they'd, they'd have their, their um, body ready and prepared to deal with a shot. Or it could be, for instance, that there could be a, a through ball played into the box. So they'd always been in a, in a position of anticipation, ready to move and deal with anything that comes either towards the goal or is played into, through to or over into the box. Um, slightly different ready set position could be is if the play, let's say, for instance, is in the middle third. So, you know, the back line will be pushed up a little bit higher. There'll be more space now between the goalkeeper and the back line. So their body stance and their ready position would change. So you'd probably have more of what we call a staggered stance, one foot in front of the other, in preparation for balls that are played over or through the back line now. And then that would mean that you could probably come and defend the space a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. So for each situation, and depending on where the ball is, folks, the goalkeeper's ready and set position will, will be affected, will change. And that's all dependent on where the ball is and what the context of, of the game is and what's happening in the play generally. And also how close the ball is to the goal. Okay. And again, that's down to your coaches to give you that depth of detail when you go into your practice curriculum. So when you design your practices, for me, you know, if I'm working on defending the space, my practices are going to look different for the goalkeepers if I'm working on defending the goal, purely <laughs> simply because we're looking at the ball moving around. At, um, bigger spaces, further distances away from the goal. So the practices must look different. So everything connects together in that sense, okay? So then we talk about your basic um, fundamental skills. So again, rather than just have a list of, well, we use the scoop, the cup, the W, you know, you, your terminology may be a little bit different depending on the height to the ball. For me now, it's about the goalkeeper understanding each specific technique but understanding also that they um, they have for using, I don't know, we could use a golf analogy, I guess. You know, as a golfer, you have many different clubs in your bag. Eric, I don't know if you play golf, but as a golf golfer, you'd probably have a few more clubs in your bag than maybe just one or two. So in terms of your your techniques, you're better off having, you know, a few more clubs in your bag than just one or two. But the key is, is understanding what club to use from that bag for each shot. And it's the same as when you're, you're making your saves or you, you're making your passes if you're in possession. It's understanding what technique to use, when to use it, why you're using it and how to use it. And that's key. So the correct selection of the appropriate techniques, depending on the situation faced, is pivotal. And here, when we're talking about handling and diving, obviously that is recognising when you need to use your scoop technique when the ball sort of is below knee height, uh, when you're using the cup technique when the ball is coming towards um, your midriff or your, or your waist, and then obviously using your double technique when it's coming towards your head uh, or towards your chest. Yeah, mm -hmm. But understanding how when, and why you're using those techniques is pivotal. Also, that is... You know, if you're going to be securing the ball, if you're not securing the ball, then obviously you're looking to understand and recognise in what situation you might not be able to secure the ball, and in that situation, what do you do next? So, does the goalkeeper understand when and why they're moving the ball away from goal into safe areas because they're not securing it, and also being able to use that parry and deflect technique? So, rather than just seeing, like I said to you before, in in the boxes that I showed you. You'd have those three things there. That's it. So you'd have um, handling and diving. But there'd be no context or um, rationale as to why that's in there. But what I've tried to do there is just give you a little bit more depth of detail with that. Yeah? Okay. Tony, can I jump in for one moment? Of course you can. Go ahead. Cool. We have two minutes left. And I, I promised everybody that this was going to be short tonight in an yes. intro. Because I know we, we could be here for hours knowing how okay. deep I know we want so, to get into this. So, just, just all I've done then, Eric, okay, because yeah. you guys are going to be going through all of this, yeah? Yes. So for me, in the technical element, these are all the key aspects in terms of the technical capability that our goalkeepers need. And this is in possession and out of possession. 
So you've got handling, you've got uh, dealing with high and wide balls, you've got your 1v1s, you've got your distribution, yeah? So for each aspect, Eric, Eric, and each element of development, yeah, you're going to be sharing with the guys all of these globes, in essence, and then you will break down the detail for them, as I have just done, through each of those globes. And there can be some fantastic conversation to had through all of these, yeah? But for me, exactly. this looks a lot better than four boxes on a screen. <laughs> yeah. So that's exactly why I've created this. It's back to you. Um, created this because I think it looks better. There's more detail. And I think our goalkeepers and coaches will enjoy the processes a lot more. Guys, th Tony, thank you. That was Awesome. And, and what I'm going to, we literally had think of less than a minute. So I, I, what yeah. I want to do is with the ID that was sent to you, I want you guys to jump back into that meeting after this. And we're just going to go for another 15, 10, 15 minutes. If you guys can support that, because I want to talk to you about the collaboration with that was all the information we're going to talk about and deep dive into. Okay. So jump back in with that same ID. We'll meet you back in here in literally one minute, hang up, get back in. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.